Join us for part two of this episode when we enjoy some beautiful anchorages, immerse into the cruising life, explore the Sea of Cortez, watch jumping rays, and play with baby sea lions. We stop overnight in San Jose del Cabo, which is unlike its noisy neighbor Cabo San Lucas, a rather quiet place, with very calm inhabitants. Enough super yards to call it a fleet, and impressive marble bathrooms. We are leaving the San Jose del Cabo Marina which is overshadowed by a gigantic cross sculpture, and are sailing east. After our quick stop in San Jose del Cabo, we will be rounding the Baja California Peninsula, stopping at Bahia Los Frailes and Ensenada de Muertos, and then we will sail further north into the Sea of Cortez, and finally reach our winter quarters in the well-protected bay of La Paz. Fishing is great in the Sea of Cortez, and using our simple cruising rig, which is nothing more than a tow line with a lure on the bungee cord, we catch us a few dinners. It's a Pacific Sierra, blaze from a Pacific Sierra, and we marinated it in a lime, chili powder, and garlic marinade, and I'm just trying to make sure it's all fully covered. So it'll be ready to grill when we get to Los Friday. Mm, looks good. This is the catch of the day, a Pacific Sierra. Very tasty fish apparently. We'll know in a few minutes. Mm. We arrive in Los Friday's in time to enjoy the colorful sunset. Next morning, we lower Little Panther, our dinghy, for the first time during our trip and set out to explore the place. Are you coming, Olaf? First landfall with our dinghy, Little Panther, here in the Bay of Los Friars. We got lucky with the surf, it's picking up a bit, but we made it in safe. Hopefully, we can get back to the boat fine. <laughs> We end up going for a hike, but soon realize the area is a bit dry. Huh. Seems it hasn't rained here in quite a while. And a little later, vultures start to circle above us, which makes us rethink our strategy. Then we encounter some more wildlife. A rather rough bushwhack through thorny bushes. But eventually we make it to the top of the hill and enjoy a great view of the bay. We hoist anchor and sail further north, but wind and waves are against us, so the trip is a bit rough. Especially if you have to go to the fore deck and check why the darn anchor chain is rattling. But the fishing is still good. Here we catch a nice bonito. The weather improves quite a bit. And eventually we drop anchor in Ensenada de los Muertos. The large bay is well protected and features a restaurant and a long sandy beach. Ensenada de Muertos, the Bay of the Dead, is also known as Bahia de los Sueños, the Bay of Dreams, thanks to a lot of PR work from a local developer. Jeff, a good friend of ours, is visiting with his family and we decide to test the maximum capacity of our homemade dinghy. The dinghy is riding pretty low in the water, but we make the trip to our boat just fine. We all jump in for a snorkel tour around Green Panther.
While in the water, we also decide to wipe some of the algae off the hull. Always a good thing to do. Jeff also dives down to check on our anchor. And our activities don't go unnoticed by the local pufferfish population, which is quite abundant here. The rest of the day is rather rainy, so we seek shelter in the only restaurant on the beach. What do you think about the weather? Is it okay that it rains? No comment? The last leg on our way to La Paz requires us to sail through the Canal de Seralvo, a channel known to funnel strong winds and currents. We seek safety in numbers and join four other boats to sail in the convoy. The best time to avoid strong headwinds in the channel is during the night, so we leave Ensenada de los Muertos about 6 p.m. and sail into the dark. The navigation lights of the other boats in a convoy are helpful, plus we keep radio contact to warn each other of approaching boats and channel markers. We arrive in La Paz in the morning and rent a berth in Marina Palmira, which is a very popular marina among cruisers and about two miles south of the city center. Now we have time to start some long overdue boat projects. For example, fixing the wire mess surrounding our radios. That includes building a new piece of furniture to house all the communication equipment. We found a great local canvas guy named Hector. He did a fabulous job building our Dodger from the ground up. Working on the Dodger. Okay. How is it going, Hector? It's going pretty good. Let me. Well, since you weren't watching me, I was doing the in the wrong way. But you're now you're here, so I'm gonna put some silicone and screws. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see anything before, so I guess we're good. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's already December, and we enjoy the many Christmas decorations and light displays in La Paz. The cruisers in the marina also throw a Christmas party and everybody is in the spirit. The White Elephant gift exchange is a big hit. <laughs> and we end the night with music and a dinner with our friends from Bellagia who introduce us to Mr. Hanky. Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo, small and brown, he comes from you. In the new year, we head out to the nearby islands Isla Partida and Los Eslotes. We enjoy a smooth ride on a calm ocean, but that means motoring and not sailing. Isla Partida features a sparse vegetation on stunning red rocks, covering all imaginable shades of red, and inviting turquoise blue bays. We are just approaching Ensenada Grande, that's going to be our anchorage for tonight. And there are two boats here and, man, look at the water. War? It's still a little chilly. It's not the 80 degree water we had in Cabo. It's not too bad. We make good use of the kayaks we borrowed from a friend in La Paz. The kayaks are perfect to explore the shallow bay Caleta Partida. We are enjoying the calm and peaceful ocean when all of a sudden some loud clapping noises break the silence. To our amazement we watch as rays start jumping out of the ocean all around us like popcorn. We later learn these rays are actually a type of manta called a mobula ray and that the locals call them tortillas. They are often seen traveling in large schools although no one knows for sure why they leap out of the water. Current theories include that the jumping is an attempt to dislodge small suckerfish called remoras, that it might be a form of cooperative hunting, or that they are just playing. We like the theory that they are just playing and enjoying their surroundings the best. 
Next we stop at Los Islotes, two large rock islets which are home to a colony of over 100 California sea lions. The sea lions are very curious and especially the pups are known for their playfulness. Just snorkeling in the water near the rocks is enough to attract the attention of the nearby sea lions. We enjoy interacting with the sea lion pups and attempt to match their twirls and somersaults underwater. Watching the sea lions move effortlessly through the water reminds us how clumsy we are compared to them. One of the reasons why the sea lions could have chosen this spot is a rich abundance of fish in the water. Finally, we say goodbye to the sea lions. and the jumping race. And we are heading back to La Paz on a very calm ocean. Join us next time when we celebrate Carnival in La Paz. Aim to fix a water maker. Convert an ice box into a fridge. Leave La Paz to cross the Sea of Cortez explore mainland Mexico and land in the Mexican Galapagos. Is it good? Yeah.